Hey, Fred, before we get to, uh, sorry, I got my kid over here. Before we get too far into Iowa, I guess it's coming up on a year, you know, since the Big Ten tournament last year. What, you know, has maybe stuck out in your mind uh, a year on from that day, that night? And, and you know, is there anything that, that folks don't know about that's maybe stuck out in your mind or that you remember from what happened, you know, over those few hours? How much time we got? <laughs> uh, that was a uh, that was one of the crazier days certainly that I've had in in uh, in my life and you know with everything that that went on it was just kind of a surreal day and I felt great the night before you know had a meal with our guys and woke up I wasn't feeling great I wasn't feeling awful it was just kind of that time of year and that's what I thought was going on you get run down after uh, the long season the grind and you just try to want to do everything you can to finish on a high note with your team, and that was my focus. And went over there, had a shoot around, and then as the day went on, uh, you know, I, I again, I got a little nap, a little rest, as I generally do on a day of a game, especially when you play late. I think we had the 8:30 game that night. And when I got over to the arena, I talked to RJ, our trainer, and said, uh, you know, I'm not feeling 100. percent You know, and, and again, uh, the smart thing, what we what we did was to go see the on-site doctor that the Big Ten uh, hired. And this was right kind of in the beginning stages, if you remember, of everything that was going on. I think, you know, 30 people maybe had died at that time from the coronavirus. And, you know, it's just really starting to pick up steam as far as what this thing potentially could be all about. But again, uh, you know, my focus was on getting our team ready to go out there and compete against a, a very good Indiana team. And uh, saw the doctor. He t checked all my vitals. My t temperature was normal. My uh, oxygen levels were normal. He x-rayed my lungs. I think at that time, that was kind of the telltale sign, if you did potentially have it, was how your lungs uh, were, uh, uh, you know, were feeling. And uh, everything was normal there. The x-ray was perfectly normal. My lungs were clear. So he cleared me to coach. And, you know, that's one thing when I got back to my room after I got wheeled off the floor, uh, you know, Seamus actually came down and said, you need to leave the floor. And I said, why? I said, what did I do? And he said, no, you, this isn't a debate. And then an official came down and said, you need to leave now. So I gave my clipboard to Doc and walked off the floor where there was a wheelchair waiting for me and an N95 mask. And they wheeled me off and took me into the ambulance. And I'm just thinking, what is going on here? And, you know, they take me in, kind of explain the situation and, you know, took me in, did the COVID test at the hospital. They didn't think I had it based on my symptoms. And uh, they actually released me because they were that confident that I didn't have it. So I beat the team back to the hotel. But that was my concern were my players. And, you know, did I do something here to harm, you know, the players and, and any anybody else and then get home and, you know, my daughter's in there and, you know, just getting crushed on TV of, you know, being reckless and that kind of thing. But, you know, I think that's the thing, you know, I figured the doctor on site knew a hell of a lot more about it than I did. And when he checked me over and gave me the clearance to coach, I coached. Uh, you know, if I think all of us knew now what we knew then, I probably would not have been cleared to coach because of what people know about this virus and how serious it is at this time. But when I look back at that whole situation, it was just an absolutely surreal day. They also did an influenza test on me. And they told me if I tested positive for influenza, it was 99.9% .9 chance I did not have COVID. And I got that call about two hours later, about one in the morning from the doctor saying I did. I did indeed test positive. I'd never been so relieved to f hear that I, had, that I had the flu. And you know, from there, again, it was just, it was relief that I didn't have it. But that was kind of the beginning of all the shutdowns and all the conference tournaments stopped and then the NCAA tournament got canceled and then the NBA I think Gobert tested positive that night when they were playing in Oklahoma City uh, but yeah looking back on it Chris it was just a, a surreal day a surreal night and uh, glad we made it through uh, but you know I do want to express you know we did everything right as far as seeing the doctor and I wasn't glued to see I, I was glued to CNN in the week when they shut everything down and then you knew a lot more about it but at that time i didn't know i wasn't watching cnn every day or the news i was focused on my team and getting them ready to play and try to finish out the season on a on a positive thanks Jim. sorry that was probably a little long-winded but who goes sam it's tough uh it's really interesting um I want to, I guess I, I do want to ask about, uh, about the upcoming game. Um, 
you, you made an interesting statement uh, after the Rutgers game, this, this phrase KYP. Um, and I'm sure that's stuff you guys talk about when, when it comes to Iowa, uh, they have so many good three point shooters. How do you, how do you even begin, begin to manage it? Um, other than to hope they miss the shots like they did last year against you guys. Yeah, it, it's a scary, scary team, <clears throat> especially the way they're playing right now. And you look at their shooting percentages over the last five games. Uh, you know, last year we played off a couple guys. Uh, you know, we had short closeouts to a couple guys. And when we won the game at Nebraska, you know, a lot of it, they, they missed shots that they, that they normally make. And they made those shots in Iowa City and they, and they pounded us. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things when you got the best post presence in the game, uh, and it's not even close, you know, how do you guard them? And, you know, you, do you play the numbers? Uh, you know, so those are things. We've got a couple different coverages that we went over today in practice. Uh, we took yesterday off. We got another one day prep heading into this one. You'd like to have three or four days to try out a couple different things. But, you know, with the way everything's going right now with our schedule, uh, we have a short time to put in our game plan. And we'll get another good opportunity tomorrow in Iowa City. We'll go a little harder. We'll get, get our guys a good sweat. Uh, you know, just to try to do everything we can, but we have to get back in transition. That's where it starts with this Iowa team. Uh, you know, if Garza is in front of the ball, they're going to do everything to get it to him. If he's trailing, he's going to drag where he can pop, where he's shooting over 50% in the last five. Uh, you look at Frederick, who's, you know, in, in my mind, one of the more underrated players in the country. Wieskamp's having an incredible, incredible year. Uh, McCaffrey's, you know, knocking down shots, and he's just so rock solid out there. Uh, you know, all across the board, you know, they can hurt you in so many ways. I've been so impressed with Murray, uh, you know, the freshman that uh, that comes off the bench in, uh, in what he can do to you and how athletic and, you know, just makes so many mature plays. He's, he's a lot better player than his dad was who I played against. But, um, you know, they just they hurt you in so many ways because there's so many weapons on the floor at, 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 at any time. Eric Olson. Yeah, Fred, uh, you know, I know that you've uh, talked often about how you like the competitiveness of your guys, uh, but there's a lot of people, you know, kind of singing the blues for Nebraska because of the tough schedule you guys had, uh, you know, with the makeup games. Uh, so how, I guess, could you kind of discuss why you think you guys maybe are playing your best right now after the long grind that you've had? Uh, it's a great question. I, I, I think the, the biggest thing our guys have continued to do is they've stayed, they've stayed completely locked in with everything that we're trying to teach and, and through all the adversity that we've had to handle. And, you know, I've, I've said this, I'm not sure there's a team that had more than we did with the 20-day complete lockout and then having about four and a half practices and then having to play seven games in 12 days in five states. And, you know, it's been a really difficult thing to manage, especially from a fatigue standpoint. And you're still seeing it. You know, in the last eight, nine minutes, we do hit walls. And uh, you've seen our numbers late in games. I think a lot of that is attributed to the fatigue that our guys are going through right now. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I could not be more proud of how they have continued to battle uh, through everything, and even the Illinois game, which I thought we kind of gave into the fatigue for the first time, then you bounce back and you win two straight after that. Uh, you know, just shows everything you need to know about our group. Is you know they're uh, they're continuing to come in here and work when a very easy easy thing to do would have been to shut down, and they continue to go out and give our our team a chance to win games. And you know we've had so many games where we've been close, uh, under ten, under eight, we've been right there. Uh, you just couldn't get over the hump. And then we, we win a couple. We win a couple in a row, and it's amazing what that does for the confidence, for the spirit of the group uh, to come in every day to know all that hard work that they're putting in is paying off. And we want to continue on this positive momentum. Guys, we could play great tomorrow and get beat by 20. I mean, I was that good, and they're playing that well right now. That game against Ohio State was as, as good a performance as I've seen all year in any league and they're just playing incredible basketball right now we just got to continue to play hard and compete uh, and go out and try to do the little things the thing i loved about last game uh, as much as anything else against that very physical tough rugged uh, rutgers team is we held them to six offensive rebounds and that's been an issue uh, you know the turnovers weren't as unforced as they had been against a team that really pressures you so you know we took big steps in those areas and we had 19 assists with about nine minutes left in the game so you know, all those things that we're stressing and working on when it pays off and you win the game by that type of margin, you know, it just shows that your guys continue to lock in. And I'm as proud of that as anything with our group. Just to follow up, now that you've had a couple of days to digest that Rutgers game, I mean, and kind of the whole big picture, I mean, are you surprised 
that they've been able to to do this? I mean, just you know, taking everything you said. I mean, just basically, are you surprised? Well, it's hard. I, I listen. I, I when I was playing, we'd have All Star break, which was usually four days, and I'd come back from All Star break, and it felt like I never played basketball before. Those first, you know couple days when you're getting ready to play again. I, I think about it, our guys had five times that amount of time. They had 20 days where they couldn't feel a ball. They couldn't be in the gym. And to continue to come out and battle and fight and claw and scratch, I mean, again, that says everything you need to know about our group. And I've said it since day one. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly what our record will be, but this is a team I think you can be proud of because of how hard they play and, and how much they care. And they've continued to show that uh, through every step of the season. Chad? Hey, Fred. Uh, here in Iowa, obviously, we're familiar you know, with your heart issues, so we're thankful you're doing well. I think I read you lost your taste of smell. Uh, I know you had a coffee faux pas at home. I guess just how have you, uh, how have you held up? You, know, you talked about your players, but we know coaches don't get a lot of sleep as it is, so how have you held up and paced yourself through this grind? Yeah, it's good to see you. First of all, Chad, I, I'm doing I'm doing great. I, you know, I appreciate the question. I, uh, I I was worried when I first had it because I had pretty much every symptom you can have with the virus and everything you read about. Uh, the good thing through it all is I never got a real high temperature and my oxygen levels uh, never got too low. And, you know, that was important in talking to my cardiologist about everything. So um, I did lose my smell. You know, the first glass of wine I drank tasted like vinegar. Uh, you know, when, when I was able to do that again. But, you know, it's just, it's one of those things, you know, in such a crazy year, uh, you know, I tried to do everything I could to keep the thing away. I didn't go out, I, you know, I watched my boys' games mostly on, on Zoom or on YouTube, and then I got it. And, you know, it's amazing how fast it spread through our team. We had nine guys get in about a 12 day span, and three coaches, and a GA, and a manager. Uh, and you just kind of go day by day once you do get it and hope it doesn't get too extreme. And I'm thankful uh, that happened. I mean, I did have symptoms, but again, it never got to the point where it, it was dangerous with my condition. Um, but yeah, it's uh, as far as the fatigue, you know, I, I really did feel it. And I talked to other coaches, you know, Coach Izzo, I talked a lot to, and he said, you'll notice it. You'll notice it for two or three weeks where you will be fatigued. And then now, is it the schedule we're on or is it, uh, you know, still symptoms from what you went through with the COVID. I, I think it's probably the schedule we're on. Uh, but, you know, again, you can sleep. At, when your players play like our guys do, when they go out and compete every night, you can sleep. Uh, you know, you can lay down. When they stop competing, that's when you have those sleepless long nights. But our guys have continued to battle through all this, uh, all this adversity and tough times. And then the other thing, you see, the sh you know, a lot of teams that shut down, they shut down with maybe one case or two cases. We shut down with our whole rotation having it. And then you got to bounce back and play, not knowing what the long-term effects of this thing are. And that's not easy. Hey, Robin Washington. Hey, I want to ask you about Ivan. Uh, he's played six minutes over the last four games, hasn't played at all the last two. Uh, is there any update on his situation, or has it just been the deal where he just hasn't fit into the rotation based off of match matchups? Yeah, it's just basically right now with the rotation. And, uh, you know, Derek obviously coming back, getting a lot of those minutes. And then Eduardo, I think the emergence, uh, you know, it's just Ivan right now is the third big in our rotation, and it's nothing more than that. Still working hard. I mean, he's still coming in every day and working and cheering on his teammates. He's had a great attitude through it all, and, and I really appreciate that out of Ivan. Okay, for finish, with Connor Happer. Fred, what have your conversations been like with um... – I know you honored them on Saturday, Kobe and Thor guys who have a chance to come back next year. Um, have you talked to them about their future and would you welcome those guys back? Uh, absolutely. You know, those two guys have been, have been phenomenal. They've both been in our starting lineup the last two games and uh, they've just really given us solid uh, minutes at, uh, at a very, you know, critical time at the end of the season for us. So, you know, I think the biggest thing is we'll, we'll handle all that at the end of the year. You know, we've still got two regular season games and then uh, the Big Ten tournament, and we'll figure it out then. But as far as having initial conversations, yes, we, we have had initial conversations. Thank you, guys. We'll, we'll see you post game tomorrow.